Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelig for Grinderschool.com. Here today with episode five of my How to Master MTT series. Uh, today, looking at middle stage play and playing from the blinds. So, what we're going to cover today is defending your blinds, uh, talking about when you should uh, defend your blinds and perhaps when you shouldn't. Uh, responding to limped pots uh, against a small blind, against late position, middle position, and early position. And then talking about how stack sizes can affect blind play. Uh, I've got several examples for you today. So, uh, we got to get straight uh, into defending the blind. So when you should, um, when villain is opening a lot, generally from late position, um, when the odds are good and the chips are worth winning, and it says that you can flat late position opens with a wider range than opens from, from early position. Uh, for example, the Jack-10 offsuit there, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, just cover these other points. When you feel you can outplay your opponent post-flop or you can at least range your opponents fairly accurately. Uh, what this means, is having an understanding and an idea of the range of hands that your opponent's playing from, from late position, um, and then how your hand will fare against against that, and um, how your opponent's hand range will uh, play against certain flops. And um, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail uh, in a bit. Um, and then the next bit, opponent has exploitable stats, um, perhaps C bets too much or doesn't C bet enough. So if they C bet too much, um, there's a higher chance that they're bluffing many flops. Um, if they've got a high attempt to steal uh, percentage and a high C bet percentage, then they're making they're being very aggressive from late position, looking to to steal steal the blinds and steal pots. Um, they're not always going to have it, um, and you've got to be able to be prepared to to make plays at those pots. And the next one, it doesn't C bet enough, so perhaps they're very sort of fit or fold. Uh, so they'll raise from from late position, but if they don't get anything, uh, they'll just check, um, and you might be able to to exploit them in that way. So let's just take a quick example. Um, Jack-10 offsuit then, and uh, let's go straight into it, straight into hand example. Um, let's go through, here we go, Jack-10 offsuit then. Uh, Cut-off raises, uh, min raises from, um, uh, sorry, ra uh, min raises with about a 30 big blind stack um, with a Jack-10 offsuit um, in, the, in the big blind. Now we decided to defend here a um, few reasons why we're defending. Um, we don't want to make it really, really easy for our opponents to steal our blinds all the time. We want to put up some resistance. Um, if our fold to uh, steal is um, is really, really high, then our opponents are just going to be raising on our on our blinds all the time. Um, we need to, you know, we need to put up some resistance. We need to defend. Um, Jack ten offsuit, um, fairly good um, hand to to defend here. Uh, as you can see. Um, getting really really good odds as well so it's what we talked about uh, earlier on is that we're getting once once antis are in and once players decide to to lower their race size we're getting really good odds to to see a flop um i'd you know i'd probably fold really junky hands like nine two suited um eight three off suit you know but broadway hands uh suited connectors are pretty good for uh for defending and also allow you to play a little bit post flop and make make plays at certain flops. So um, we decide to check, and the uh, the cutoff decides to bet just over just over half part. Now we've got two overs and a gut shot, and this is the kind of example where we think we need to be able to range our opponent, um, and try and work out if we can uh, we can raise this particular particular spot uh, with Jack ten off suit. Um, it's a semi bluff because you know an eight is going to give us uh, a straight. Um, you know, and a Jack Jackson tens might be outs as well if he's holding something like Ace Nine. So let's just bring in Poker Stove um, and try and work out a range of hands that our opponent is uh, is raising from late position and see how that fares against this board. Uh, how many hands, if we raise, can continue? So here's uh, here's forty percent. Um, if we go back, so nine nine seven two. Um, so this is the this is a range of hands, just just a rough estimate of hands that he might decide to to open from late position. Um, if we uh, if we think about it, the only hands really that he can continue with are over pairs, flush draws, um, anything that's hit the board. Um, so we can immediately eliminate quite a lot of these these hands. Um, we just start with, let's just get rid of anything that doesn't have a nine or seven or a two in it with an ace. Okay. 
Okay, so we've cut out 8% uh, of hands already. Uh, 97, 92, got some hands here. So we've lost about 15% now. Sorry, um, percent off. So we're almost, we've almost cut his range down to 50%. Um, and seven two. I can't get rid of all of these suited cards. Um, so then we have to keep in the uh, the flush draws. Now what I'm doing here, um. Uh, this is just a rough estimate. This is the kind of hands that we would think that this opponent might continue um, continue with. Um, as you can see, we've already cut the one was down to, to fifty percent. Uh, we can keep keep going with these hands seven two, um, so we can get rid of these hands. We might continue with Jack ten off suit. Um, but what I'm trying to demonstrate it here is that we can reduce his range of hands for continuing. Um, 50%. I mean, if I continue to go through all of these, I won't do that now because it's going to take far too long. And just put in the club combinations of, of these hands. Uh, we'll find that this is much less than 20%. So we've managed to cut his range um, down by more than 50%. Um, so what this means is that I can make a pot size uh, bet here. So the pot is 6,475. I could raise this raise to that value and I just need to get my opponent to fold 50% of the time. Now we know that this is likely to fold more than 50% of the time. Uh, so this is immediately going to be profitable. Now, if he does decide to flat, uh, we have outs, you know, as I said, 10, jack, 8 outs. We need to be careful, obviously, uh, the 8 of clubs. Um, so I decided to make it 6,000. Uh, just to show that um, how much fold equity uh, we need, how many, how often we need to get him to fold. I'll just bring in the calculator um, quickly. Um, so we've bet 6,000. And then the pot was 12, 4. Seven five. So we just need to get him to fold forty eight percent of the time for this to be a break even play. Now, uh, if I did carry on going through poker stove, just to get rid of those hands. Uh, actually, what I might do is just uh, pause the video here and just go through poker stove just to just to prove that well we can get rid of fifty percent of his range. Um, so I'll be right back in one minute. Okay, so what I've done is just um, change all these suited cards, to just the um, club combos. Um, yeah, just so like queen four suited, um, just the just the clubs, and as you see, we've gone down to seventeen point seven percent. So if we bring the calculator back in, seventeen point seven divided by forty percent was our original. Equity. So he's only continuing forty four point two five percent. Now our uh, raise here just needs to work um, about fifty percent. Um, let's just go back. So it was a six thousand raise. Uh, just to recap on that, so 6,000 divided by uh, the pot that it is now, 48%. Okay, um, so we managed to uh, to cut out much more of his range than we needed to. Uh, so this is going to be a profitable uh, play. So 48%, we actually get him to, to fold. Uh, but it only continues with 44%, so we actually get him to fold 56%. So if we won, okay, so he's continuing with 55 He's folding, sorry, fifty-five point seven five percent of the time. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, immediately going to be going to be profitable. We could probably get rid of quite, uh, you know, a number of other hands in his range. Um, but this uh, is just an example, just to demonstrate how much, how many hands in his range in this spot uh, we can actually get to fold. Um, if this flop was, um, you know, didn't have two clubs, um, then this raise is going to be even even more profitable because he's um, going to have fewer draws with which to call our raise in position. Okay, um, hopefully that didn't take too long. Um, to go over it wasn't too boring. Um, let's just uh, let's just move on then. Uh, so when you shouldn't um, never call with a short stack unless you have a plan. If perhaps you have less than twenty big blinds, you can flat um, with aces and kings possibly um, to uh, to check check jam or flop. Um, okay, although against better players, this is uh, going to be quite obvious, and they'll be able to get away from their from their hand. Um, this point, then odds are not. Uh, so when you shouldn't, then odds are not as great, and the chips aren't worth winning. Um, so for example, at the early stages, I know we're talking about middle stage play here, um, in terms of defending 
in your blinds. But I just want to give you a quick example then. Um, Queen 10 suited hand here. Um, the button decides to open. And again, we, you know, 30.8% of hands. Don't know what happened there. Sorry. 38% of hands. Um, okay, so we've got um, you know, to break even if there's no other betting um, post flop, um, we just need 30.8% equity. And against a late position range, Queen 10 suited does. Um, that's fairly well. Don't forget that people are going to be um, stealing slightly tighter, a tighter range. Um, in the early game, you know, it's not worth picking up 30 chips. Um, Queen 10 suited 42% here, um, even if we made this range really tight. 15%, we've still got enough um, equity to, to call in this spot. The thing is, uh, this is just based on if we, there are no, there's no betting for the rest of the rest of the hand. So we're playing out of position um, and it's, it's going to be quite difficult for us to, uh, to win chips. Now, um, in this spot, I'm going to make exactly the same play that I've just demonstrated um, with the Jack-10 offsuit hand. Um, we've only got two overs, backdoor, flush draw. Um, but what I really want to demonstrate at this point is I can make exactly the same same bet. I'm raising to 205. I need to get him to fall 50% of the time. Um, that might not work in the early stages because it's going to be raising a tighter range. Um, although on this flop, um, you know, all the unpaired uh, Broadway hands are going to completely miss. So that, and you know, there are quite a few of them. Um, the thing is, so he does fold, and we win uh, this nice, you know, amount of chips. Um, but let's just look at our stack size. So we are two hundred big blinds deep at the start of the hand, and after this. After we win this pot, um, we make go up to like, say, six thousand two hundred. Um, so we've we've made let's say we've made five big blinds, but five big blinds when we're two hundred big blinds deep is is um, pretty much meaningless. Um, which is why when we go back to the Jack Ten offsuit hand, um, when we're much shallower, and we win five big blinds, um, or a little bit more, we. Um, you know, it's much more valuable. Our stack um, is 40 big blinds, an extra five big blinds, six, seven big blinds. It's, it's really, really valuable. When you're 200 big blinds deep, it's just uh, no point in trying to uh, to make plays like that. Um, so the things to consider there then are the fact that the in the early stages, um, late position opens are gonna tend to be a tighter range not as players recognize that it's just not worth stealing 30 chips. Uh, but in the later stages, the range of hands reopening going to be much, much wider. Um, and so we can make plays at more flops um, and we're getting better odds as well as the raise size gets lower. And uh, there are antis in play. Um, so when you shouldn't, an opponent is raising a tighter than expected range, as we just talked about uh, in the early stages of raising a tighter range. Um, if you find opponents that don't have a high attempt to steal percentage, uh, perhaps they're not particularly positionally aware. Um, then it might be best to, uh, to not defend against them. Um, if they're raising a very tight range, um, it's going to be very difficult um, for you to play post-flop out position against them. Um, and then the fin finally, you shouldn't defend your blind if you have no idea about your opponent's range. So um, what this means is if you are not particularly good at ranging an opponent, um, you know, you definitely need to practice that if you if you if you're not. Uh, perhaps if play, the players only played a few hands at the table, it's quite difficult to get an idea of the right range of hands that you could be playing. Um, but yeah, the first, yeah. So that first point about not knowing you, um, not being able to range your opponent is uh, it's probably a reason to to not defend your blinds because you're going to get into spots where you just don't know where you're at post flop. Um, you can't even think about. Um, certain plays that will be profitable. Um, it's just best to avoid it. Everyone loses uh, money in the blinds. Um, so these are the ways at um, you know, looking to, to, to win chips or to, to defend your blinds um, a little bit more. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable playing post flop, um, or you don't feel comfortable, uh, say three betting, um, then actually folding is probably the best way because you then don't have to play post flop. Um, 
So just, uh, yeah, I would recommend just playing in position um, and just folding, you know, only playing a really tight range from the blinds. So let's just move on. Um, responding to, to limp pots then. Um, so if the small blind decides to limp, you should put pressure on um, if he limps quite a lot, uh, blind versus blind. Um, you should take control of the pot by raising. There's more ways to win. Um, you can, you know, you can raise pre-flop and then you can see bet, and that's going to work um, quite a lot of the time. You know, if you decide to check, you, you know, um, you reduce the number of ways that you could you can win the win the hand. Uh, and then I suggested use the same range as a late position raise uh, post ante. So um, let's have a look. Um, it's hand nine seven suited. Uh, let's find it. Okay, here we go then. So uh, small blind decides to limp. Um, decides to make it about 2.5, 2.7 x. Um, so taking control of the pot straight away, he decides to, to call. Uh, pick up a gut shot, fairly dry flop though. And uh, we can just bet 35, 40% pot. Again, uh, doesn't have to be particularly uh, big. And also, if we just bring the calculator in again, I can just show you something. Um, so we've made a 3,860 chip bet, and the pot's now 13,940, which means we only need to get this to work 27.69% of the time for this to be um, a break-even play. And we know that he's going to fold probably much, much more than 27.69%. You know, we're looking at it's probably going to be fold 40, 50, 60% of the time, um, which is uh, which is great. So that's that's why... Um, we take uh, take the initiative when the small blind limps if he's limping a fairly, uh, fairly large range uh, or wide range. Um, if the player um, has a propensity to limp shove when stacks get shallower um, or shorter, uh, we need to be aware of that and think and adjust your range accordingly. Um, but when stacks are you know average stack here, um, then we should just be playing as if we're from the button um, and raising into a into a weak weak blind okay um so that's that's that um versus early position middle position late position players got an example with ace jack suited in a minute check the stats if they limp a lot then isolate with a wide range broadway hands pairs and suited connectors um suited connectors i've put that there um you're much better off playing um raising with broadway hands you, if you feel comfortable playing post flop then you can raise a really wide range um c bet a lot of flops uh, especially if they limp call a lot but then fold to c bet um, quite a lot then um, you know you can play a really really wide range but if you're looking to uh, play hands for value then Broadway hands um, are going to be much 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 better if they have tight stats be careful of monsters notes will be key have you seen him or her limp monsters before um, if they if a player gets down to you know less than 30 big blinds um, they haven't limped before and suddenly they limp from early position uh, you've got to start thinking that they might be playing a very big hand uh, so let's just look at this ace jack suited hand. I think I've got two examples actually. Um, let's just have a look. Okay, so here's uh, an early position limp, and um, this player is playing thirty eleven, and we decide to uh, to raise uh, to four x. Now this is um, fairly fairly large ra raise. Um, if I had a shorter stack, I'd probably raise a little bit less. Um, here, I just want to compound his mistake of limping um, and take the initiative as well. Uh, because if we don't hit the flop, uh, we might have to check fold if this guy decides to bet and he be betting, could be betting his entire range. Um, so again, pretty pretty dry flop. Um, and we can bet fairly small again. Um, if the board is a bit uh, more draw heavy, then we can, um, we'd have to, to bet a little bit more. Uh, but we would expect our opponent to be to be calling a little bit more as well uh, because of the range of hands that he would be limp calling this spot would um, tend to be ones that would I don't know, suit the connectors um, that would have draws, straight draws and flush draws. Uh, but here we can bet really quite small and uh, he just folds. Okay, uh, so that's the first example. So a player um, that's limping, limping a lot. Um, it's kind of telling you as well the uh, range of hands that he's playing. I'm going to give you another example here. Um, so actually from the same table, just want to say that this guy decides to, to limp down. He's playing a very similar range, 30, 10. 
and we decide to uh, to raise again to take the initiative and decides to flat. Okay, we get this exactly the same flop. Um, but what I'm, um, I'm going to do really quickly is um, show you. So if this player is playing thirty percent of hands, um, this is what it what it might look like. Now, if we know that he's raising ten percent of those hands, we can get rid of um, these. Let's say all of these hands. Let's give him these pairs. Um, okay, so that's the range of hands that he might be limp calling with. So nineteen only point nine percent. So we can um, we bet again, and we can try and work out. Okay, so what sort of hands? I mean, we get to get him to fold still quite a lot on this flop. Uh, but if he does decide to continue, um, we can then range him range him accordingly. So again, we can make the same size bet. This time he decides to call this player. And two diamonds doesn't really show it um, uh, change anything. Um, so we decide to check. We've got ace high. This is a very passive player. Someone that's playing 30-10, um, you know, limping like this. It will tend to play quite passively post-flop and will be quite um, obvious and honest um, in terms of telling you what they've got. So I would expect this player to to bet uh, a king here, um, check eight, some, an eight or a five, um, and probably check uh, something like a six, seven, six, nine, um, any sort of uh, draw that he, that he has. Um, so he does decide to check, which immediately means that we can go back to our range of hands um, and eliminate all of the kings. Um, we still have this, uh, range has um i mean if he's calling the calling the flop we'd expect him to call with it eight or five and six six seven six nine hands like that um so we can actually get rid of all of these hands as well um let's just go back really quickly so eights and fives Okay, so we've eliminated all of these hands. We've just kept in um, this range of hands now for hands that he might decide to, to call with on the on the flop. Um, notice that seven six two wasn't in our original range uh, range of hands. It could easily be in our original range. Um, we'll put it in for now just because I want to to demonstrate something. Um, so it's the range range. Uh, sorry, the range of hands that he could be continu continuing with. I would expect him to bet a king and bet to expect him to raise his strong hands or bet his strong hands on the turn. So we can get rid of a set of five, set of eights. Um, and the jack comes on the river. And what we want to try and work out now is whether we can actually uh, value bet this jack or we should uh, we should check. Now, we've already worked out that we're pretty sure that he has, doesn't have a king because right, we'd expect him to bet um, his kings on the turn. So we need, now need to think if, what sort of hands we get value from. And if we, or if we should let him, uh, let him bluff. So, if we go back to to poker stove, uh, there are a lot of eights and fives still in his range that we get value from if we if we bet. Um, he might fold, might fold the weak fives, obviously. Um, but our check on the turn after betting the flop looks like we've given up. We're showing showing weakness. Um, so he might look us up a little bit lighter. Um, seven six suited is. Um, only raised a uh, hand in his range at the moment that he may decide to turn into a bluff. Um, but there are a lot of hands that we get value from. All of these eights, um, possibly even these sevens and sixes. Um, as I said, our check on the turn does sort of uh, signify weakness. Um, you know, and he might think, well, if he has a has a king here, um, he's more likely to bet the turn. And he might just be. He might think that I'm just trying to represent this this jack. Um, he thinks I don't think he's thinking on a level of I think I'm thinking what he's thinking and if he thinks I think and all that malarkey I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's that's going to happen here so what we're trying to do is just get value from the hands left in his range um, if there's only one really one hand like six seven that he might decide to, to bluff with then we should definitely be going for the thin value here um, looking to get called by uh, one of these hands uh, an 8x 5x hand possibly sixes and sevens as well
Um, so we bet just on the half pot. Um, we don't want to bet too big because we want to fold out those those hands that we want to try and get value from. And uh, he does call and he does have queen eight suited. Now if we go back to poker stove, uh, queen eight suited is still one of those hands that we said we, we could probably get value from uh, with a bet on the river. Okay, so that's a really uh, an example of trying to arrange our opponents uh, based on the hands that they're limping uh, and then continuing with post-flop. Um, so, and then this uh, final point, then responding to limp bots. Competent players are unlikely to limp in any position, especially late position. Uh, however, I've seen a lot recently where if both blinds have stack sizes of uh, less than 30 big blinds, some good players are that limping in late position as they don't want to get shoved on. Uh, and limping kind of freezes the action. I'm going to demonstrate how it does that now. Um, so here we are with pocket eights. Now pocket eights is a good hand, 15, 16 big blinds. If this guy decided to to raise, um, pocket eight is a perfectly good hand, really good hand to to three bet shove. Uh, but the fact that he's now he's just decided to limp, um, kind of freezes freezes the action. Um, you know, if I had Ace Five suited here and he decided to to raise and he's raising a you know stealing a wide range, or stealing a lot, and then I'd shove Ace Five suited in this spot. But the fact that he's now limped, I'll just demonstrate really quickly. Um, so I've put in an extra four thousand six hundred thirty nine chips. Uh, we we'll just bring the calculator back in. Four thousand. Uh, just work that again. Four thousand six hundred thirty-nine. And we divide it by the, the pot size that it is now five six four. Oops. So that's six four nine. Um, we need to get him to to fold um, eighty-two percent of the time. Um, which you know, which isn't great. We talked about uh, fold equity about sort of you know get them to fold sixty percent of the time or fifty percent, seventy percent. But this is quite high trying to get this guy to fold. Um, you know, some players will will limp on the button with a big hand, uh, you know, putting pressure on you. Uh, they'll also limp hands that they like to to play post flop. Um, you know, if the if I decided to check here, my my range is my range is uh, is really really wide. I can't say it's a hundred percent because I'm likely to raise. Uh, the top end of that, but um, you know, it might be 90, uh, 90 or eighty percent of hands, probably about ninety percent of hands actually. Uh, that doesn't include the top ten percent. Um, so and he can play fairly easily against uh, against that. Um, but here, yeah, with eights, I decided to to shove, um, and he does just uh, he does just fold at this point. Um, but yeah, so when someone limps like that. Um, we have to think that they're limping a really, really wide range in order to get the, the necessary fold equity, um, which is why um, it's much better to do it with a hand that um, is, is is strong like this. Um, so we're thinking maybe ace-10, ace-jack um, suited. So ace-10 suited, ace-jack. Uh, pocket pairs, probably six sevens uh, to shove in this particular spot. Although every every spot um, is uh, sort of situation dependent. Um, okay. Um, so that's that about responding to, to limp pots. Uh, really quickly then, how stack sizes affect blind play. Uh, with less than 15 big blinds, close to anti, you should be shoving almost any two cards in the small blind versus to big blind. Um, you should be playing very tight in open pots as you have limited fold equity, so you can't really three bet um, re-steal. Uh, but it's, again, it's very opponent dependent. Um, Take a look at my short stacking MTT shoving and short stacking MTTs calling shorts. Um, I'm not going to go into it in this uh, episode because uh, you can you just go and look at those. Um, but just really quickly, um, let's just go through this example of ace jack off suit. Um, let's have a look. Ace jack off suit then. So this uh, I decided to, to shove. Okay, and we need 43.3% equity to, to break even. Um, so again, poker stove is going to be our favorite thing in the world. Um, we think he he's shoving any pair, uh, any Broadway hand. I mean, that's a really tight range. He'll be shoving sort of, what is it? 12, 11, 11 big blinds in this spot. Uh, then immediately, as you can see, we've got more than enough equity, like eight, eight percent more than we need, uh, to make the, to make the call there. So that's, I mean, that's absolutely fantastic spot. Um, if we think maybe he's, uh, I mean, I think it's really difficult to to say that he's not shoving these hands unless he's a really weak player and he's only shoving really tight, like tight, a tight range. Um, maybe something like 
like this. Um, then our, you know, it's just just on the uh, on the border. Um, we need forty three point three percent, and we're getting forty three point two eight eight. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's still, I think I'd still make the call. I know it would lose over time a tiny amount of chips. Um, but I mean, most if you think about most competent players, if you know this player is uh, a regular, um, it's pretty pretty competent. Um, you can include any pair, any Broadway, probably any suited ace, uh, off suit ace suited, and we can include all of these hands as well. Um, I mean, let's just let's just try that. Twenty seven point six percent, and our equity is. Uh, 56% uh, so we you know we're sort of snapping snapping this off okay uh, so make sure you're using poker stove to try and work out um, spots like that um, and then uh, once again we got the a nines hand as well um, let's find it that doesn't seem to be in here oh there it is okay so uh, here about uh, small blind has about 10 big blinds decided to shove now from the small blind um you know from my shoving uh series that his range of hands is going to be really really wide i mean we most of us would know that a pair of nines is a snap call here um even if you're shoving really tight range for a small blind shove here um you know we're definitely getting the right odds we need 44 percent to break even and we're getting 54 percent um the uh what I wanted to the point I wanted to make wasn't the fact that we should be uh, calling here with knives. That's very should be fairly obvious. Um, it's the range of hands that we can actually call with. Um, so Ace Two Offsuit gives us forty point two nine four percent, and that's the against the really really tight range. Now, if I think these range, I mean, a lot of good regulars are going to be shoving probably up to. Let's say let's say forty percent. I mean, some shove far wider than that. Let's just say forty percent. Um, our nines are doing really really well against that range. Um, that's why it's a snap call. Um, Ace two off suit is doing really really well as well, and we're getting getting the right odds to make the call here. We need forty four percent. We're getting forty six point six eight nine percent. Now, if you try king two off suit, we're not getting the right odds. We try king five off suit, uh, we're still not getting the right odds. So let's try king ten off suit. Okay. Um, we're definitely getting the right odds. Suddenly, uh, our equity goes up a lot. Um, and king eight offsuit is the worst offsuit king. Um, let's try jack ten suited. Yeah, that's uh, that'd be a fine call here. Queen jack suited, absolutely. Um, doing really really well. Um, let's just try nine eight suited. Okay, so nine eight suited wouldn't be a call. Um, let's try king ten suited. Okay, and that's doing that's doing really well. Um, so again, something to think about um, is to to play around with uh, these with the uh, poker stove. Um, just look at your equity um, in certain spots against a your perceived range that your opponent's shoving. Uh, that's really important. That you you know you do take the time to to review that and to go through this away from the table. Uh, hopefully, that's given you an idea of of how to do it. Um, sixteen to twenty-two big blinds. Then we should be three looking to three bet shove versus loose openers with a wide range. Um, it's the range I've recommended. Um, there, and then again, see see my short stack in the MTT's restealing uh, series. Uh, twenty-three to thirty big blinds. Then any substantial three bet from the blinds will most likely commit you to the pot. But shoving is generally an over bet. Um, if you, yeah, so if you have thirty big blinds, you should be looking to. To three bet mainly for value um, with ace jack ace queen plus things like that um, with really uh, decent pocket pairs pocket eights pocket nines uh, looking to really get it get it in pre flop, uh, pre -flop. Um, obviously your ranges need to change based on the where your opponent's raising from uh, but if you're raising from late position um, then you know mid pocket pair sevens eights nines um, definitely go up in value and you can three bet uh, get them in obviously again it's situation dependent and opponent dependent. Um, and I can't say you should definitely with thirty big blinds be three bet three betting three bet calling it off with sevens. Uh thirty big blinds plus then defending your blinds with decent broadway hands that can pick up draws and you can check raise post flop. Uh you can extend this to suited connectors as well. Um and then plus uh forty big blinds, three betting won't commit you to the pot. Uh but again it's very opponent dependent. Um so let's just really quickly use my last example. 
um, A7 suited. Oops, no, it's, okay, this one's A, A8 suited. Um, pretty much the same thing though. This guy's uh, raising a wide range. Um, and we talked about other ways that we can defend our blinds. We don't just have to flat and then check raise flops. We can a three bet um, to get this person to, to fold. Um, so that's what I decided to do. Um, I decided to put an extra 5,750 chips in. Um, so let's just bring the calculator in again. 5,750 divided by 11.75. I just need to get him to fold 52% of the time. Now, if I bring in a poker stove here, if we think that he's raising 35% from the button, um, we just need to reduce this range um, range of hands uh, by 50%. We need to get this down to 17%. 17 um, so I think we can probably take away a ton of these hands already. Um, he may decide to flat with some of these suited connectors, so we might leave those in. Okay, so he's down to 20.8%. 20, 20 uh, um, get rid of some of these suited aces as well. As you can see, we're getting down to a point where he's, uh, he's going to fold majority of these hands. Um, and look, we're down, now we're down to 13%. Um, so if you just want to see the maths again, 13 divided by 35, you're continuing 37% of his range, which means that he's folding 62% of the time. And we said with our raise here, three bet, uh, just to be break even needs to be about 50%. Uh, we're getting to fold a lot more than that, uh, so this is going to be immediately profitable. Okay, um, I hope I've not gone through too, uh, through things too quickly. Um, I recognise this is a short, and I just want to get as much uh, content in as possible. Um, let me know if you need me to go through anything. Uh, absolutely, I'll do that. Uh, so, quick recap on this episode. Then we talked about several ways to defend your blind. You can flat a wider range versus loose late position openers, um, and then be prepared to check raise flops as a bluff or a semi bluff. Um, you can three bet a wider range for value and as a bluff versus loose slate position openers. Uh, just demonstrated. I've talked about responding to limp pots and playing post flop out of position, being able to range your opponents based on what they're limping um, and taking out hands that they're probably uh, likely to raise in the first place. And then we talked about how stack sizes can affect blind play. So I hope that's been uh, educational and useful. Um, this has been Gazellig for grinderschool.com. Uh, until next time, have a great time at the tables. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye.